Hey everyone, my name is Alexandra and I am a watercolor artist. Since we are into December now, Christmas is coming soon, I wanted to do a tutorial with you guys on how to paint a watercolor poinsettia with watercolor and ink. I am so excited about this one, it just makes me excited for Christmas, so let's get started. So what you guys will need for supplies today is two cups of water. I have one for clean water, one for dirty. I have a napkin for drying my paintbrushes. For paint today, I'm using Art Philosophy & Co's Terrain Palette as well as a few colors from the Woodland Palette. Um, main colors you guys will need is green, red, yellow, and some sort of blue. If you have those, you'll be able to mix whatever we're doing here. Um, if you guys have a brown though, that would also help out. For paintbrushes, I am using Opus paintbrushes sizes eight and zero. So the first thing that we're gonna paint is the center of our poinsettia. So we are going to use sort of just a light pinky gold color. So I have some of my yellow here and I'm just gonna mix it with my pink color on this palette specifically, it's crab apple. And I'm mixing my color there. Have it decently watered down. And I'm gonna paint just a little cluster of dots in the center of my paper. So I have drawn some super light pencil guidelines for this, but you guys are welcome to just dive right in and paint. It can be done that way as well. Okay, so I have a cluster of colors there. Now I have to let that dry before I go into painting my petals, otherwise it's all gonna bleed into each other. All right, so now that the center of my flower is mostly dry, we are going to dive right in and start painting the petals. So I'm switching to my paintbrush that is my number eight size. And what I wanna do is get some of the red color that I wanna use. So I'm using Sourwood from this palette, and then I'm also using my Foxberry color from my Woodlands palette. So that just gives me the nice, deep, rich red that you often see in poinsettias. So the first layer of this, we're gonna do it more watered down. So what I'm doing is I'm starting with the tip of my paintbrush down. I'm applying pressure as I pull back, and I'm just creating sort of half leaf shapes. And what you'll notice is that I just kind of lift my paintbrush up off the paper as I near that center portion of my flower. So with my petals, I want to work quick. And while it's still wet, I want to add in more color just to really use that wet on wet technique and bleed in some more colors, add that depth to it. So I can Go right now, right from the tip, and I'm just gonna add this really bright red. And now I want to make sure that I'm still allowing my petal to have some depth. So I'm rinsing my paintbrush, and I'm gonna go back and I'm just gonna pick up some of that color that I had put on, just to still allow some of the light to kind of show through. So now we're gonna continue doing the same thing and I'm just sort of staggering a little bit randomly around the center of my flower. You'll notice with poinsettias, often the petals are sort of just randomly spread out. As I'm doing, so the same thing that I did for the first one for this petal, I kind of added a little bit of a wave to it. So I'm just giving more shape to the petal that I'm already painting. Again, we're starting with that lighter color and then I can go in and I can add that brighter red, maybe just to half of it to let it bleed into the rest of it. And I'm okay with this flower to kind of make every single petal a little bit different and not have them super uniform. So now I'm gonna jump across to the other side and we're gonna do the same thing. I might make this one a little wider. Just make sure that I have enough water on there. And again, I'm just kind of lifting it right up, <laughs> lifting my paintbrush right up off the paper before I hit that center point. So now again, I can go in 
with my brighter color and just dot it into some portions. I can rinse and dry my paintbrush and just pick up some of the paint on other spots to give it that somewhat translucent look. So now I'm gonna add a fourth petal. And we're just following that exact same concept. And now that I see sort of a little gap in here, I just wanna fill those spaces in. So we'll add one more little petal in here. And again, I'm okay if they're all kind of different sizes. And you'll notice as they dry, because I'm using two different reds and I'm using a lot of the technique where I'm using wet on wet and I'm really letting the colors bleed into each other, um, I just get this really cool effect as each petal dries and each petal looks so different from the last one. So there is our first layer of petals. We're gonna build out a little bit further but I need to let that dry before I do that just so that I don't end up with the colors all bleeding into each other. Which means in the meantime, I can go back to the center of my flower and we're just gonna add a little bit more depth to it. So I'm going back in with this sort of yellow gold color. So I had mixed some yellow and some brown and I'm just gonna add little dots where I've already painted making sure to leave a lot of space in between, but just adding that tiny bit of depth that I'm looking to get in there. All right, so once this layer of petals fully dries, we'll move on to our second layer of petals, which is in behind. All right, so now that that layer is dry, we are gonna move on to our next layer of petals. This time I want us to start with an even lighter layer, or sorry, lighter color, <laughs> more watered down layer. Um, and then we're gonna add some details, but I just really wanna keep the depth of those petals that are in front popping, look like they're popping out. So the ones behind we're gonna do lighter. Um, so I'm gonna add some more water and I'm following exactly the same concept that I was before by painting these big sort of leaf shapes. But in this one, I'm just gonna kind of fill into that white gap there. So I'm keeping it lighter, but I still wanna add depth. I don't wanna keep it all very flat. So while it's wet, I'm just gonna go into the tip with my red, I believe I'm using redwood here. And I'm just letting that color work its way in to the rest of the poinsettia. So now I'm just gonna continue on this exact same trend and going all the way around, I'm adding these really nice loose flowers, sorry, loose petals, because my first layer of petals are dry already. It's okay if I come right up to it. And now that it's damp, we're gonna go in and again, just add that really nice deep red. I can add it to the full petal. I can add it just to half, sort of like I did with this one. And we'll just continue to work our way around. And with all of the petals, I'm not keeping them super uniform to each other. They can kind of be random shapes if I want. And we're just gonna fill in all of these spaces. So most of these, I kind of sat them right in between where two petals were intersecting. For this one, I'm just gonna stick it behind what I've already painted. And then add that second color mostly to the tip. And you can see that as it dries, it just gives such a cool effect because it just bleeds into the rest of the petal. All right, and now I just wanna fill in some of the gaps that I have here so I can paint some extra petals nice and light. And we're gonna be adding a little bit of pen to this so that'll give it, give it that extra definition that it might be missing. 
So I'm just filling in some of those gaps. All right, so now I have my full poinsettia with its petals. I want to add some green to it. So we're gonna add some leaves. I'm gonna go in and mix a bit of a green. I'm gonna use some of my vine leaf here. I might add just a touch of blue to darken it just a little bit. And some yellow to give it a tiny bit more warmth. And now I wanna paint super big petals for this. So I'm gonna start on the bottom here and I'm doing petals with jagged edges. So with the tip of my paintbrush down, I'm pulling back, I just need a bit more water on there. And what I'm doing is I'm lifting my paintbrush and placing it down all the way as I go to give this nice jagged edge. So now I'm just gonna fill in that middle portion and I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. And then I can just fill it in around the flower petal that I've already painted. Now with that, I can go in and I can add some color just to add some depth. So I just put some blue in there and I'm just gonna let it bleed into the petal and do its thing. So now we're gonna do another one of those down here. So I wanna make sure my paintbrush has enough water and starting another one from the bottom here. So I can start with that first stroke if I want and then just adding the little jagged edges. I'm gonna work my way towards the center. With some nice big leaves. So even if I wanted, I can make this one that I have on the left here even bigger, just to give more fullness to my painting. Then I'll add some blue in there. I might just focus on putting it on one half of the leaf give it more of a shadowed effect. And now just to add some more stuff to it, some more dimension, make it even more Christmassy, we're gonna add some nice big pine branches in. So I'm using green. I'm gonna keep this a bit lighter because I don't want it to stand as much out as much as the poinsettia and the leaves, but we're just gonna paint some really big pine branches. So I'm doing a curved line down the middle in the center, and then I'm sort of just feathering out needles all around. So everything is angled towards that center line, but I'm just having fun with it. The shapes are kind of random. We'll add one on this side. And again, you'll notice you can be super messy with it, and that is okay. I add another little one on the right side here. I can use a bit of a dry on dry brush technique if I want, which I have a bit of going on there. And I'm just filling in the background. So now we might add some more details in behind, but we're gonna go in with pen first and just really make that poinsettia stand out. So I am using a Micron number one pen. If you guys use any sort of fine liner, just something that is water resistant. So we're gonna start in the center of our flower. And what I'm doing is I'm outlining that shape that I made. So essentially what I'm doing is little bumps all the way around the edge to kind of outline that cluster of dots. So then I'm gonna continue that as I work my way in. So I'm sort of doing little bumps, little swirls in the center just to really define that. I might do some spots with thicker black and then really add some to the middle, make that stand out. And then next step is going to be to outline each petal. And again, I can add some waves in there. Nothing has to be too, too smooth. We're just trying to give this good definition. So continuing on, we're just gonna work our way out and get all of these outlined. So I'm gonna start with my bigger petals that definitely look like they're more in front.
and you'll notice that as soon as I outline these, the spots where maybe the colors seem to kind of run into each other, they disappear and it just starts to stand out. So we'll do that with our petals that are at the very back now. Okay, now with poinsettias, they tend to have a vein that sort of goes down the middle. So I wanna do that with each of mine. So I'm doing a really light, thin line down the middle of each petal. But again, I'm not doing it super straight. I'm giving it all a little bit of a wave. And the petals that I can see very clearly that I painted half of it darker, half of it lighter, I'm sort of gonna work on following that line. And just coming all the way up with it. So again, that makes it stand out more. Now just on these front petals, I'm gonna do some lines sort of coming out from that center and just give it a little bit more interest. I'm deliberately only doing that on these front petals just to make them stand out even more than the ones in behind. All right, so now that sort of that base outline is done, we can go in and outline our leaves. So I'll start with that center line and then I'm just gonna outline these jagged edges that I painted all the way to the top of where my leaf is. And now similar to what I did with those center flower petals, I'm adding the veins of the leaf coming out from that center line. So again, very loose, very natural. Nothing is too rigid. I'm gonna do the exact same thing on this leaf that's on the left-hand side here. And then we're just adding those vein lines in. Okay, so with these leaves, let's give them some more definition. In that center line, I'm just gonna sort of outline it. I'm gonna weave my line in and around where I've already drawn, just to add more depth there. And right away you can see a difference. So next thing that I'd like to do is add some dots into my painting. I love doing this when I'm, especially when I'm combining watercolor and ink. So what I like to do is sort of focus on where maybe you would see the shadows and that's where I add the dots. It's just a really cool and fun effect. So first place that I think of with these flowers is our second layer of flower petals. So right where they sort of intersect with the layer that's in front, that would naturally be a shadow. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna add some little dots and sort of scribbles into that part. and coming up and it's just gonna give our flower immediately so much more depth. So I'm gonna do that right now at all the points where it intersects. All right, so now I'm gonna do the same thing that I did there, but sort of with those tiny little petals that I stuck in behind. So where I see them kind of line up with that big petal that's in front, I'm just gonna do some little dots to just add that definition, add that separation, sort of visually give you the look that one thing is in front of the other. And I'm not going too crazy with how much I'm adding. I'm just doing it as really simple and fine details. This is such a simple thing to add to your paintings that will just, if you're combining sort of the mixed media look, it will definitely transform what you're painting. So now that we've done that, if I want, I can sort of work some of the dots up the center. Now that we've done that, I just wanna thicken some of these lines on these front petals. So I'm just gonna go over where I've already drawn with those center lines and the ones that branch off. And I'm just gonna follow the line. I can come off of where I already drew a little bit if I want and just really make those stand out. 
And now with my leaves, I don't need to do too much with them, but I just wanna add a little bit of the dots to it to give it that really cohesive look. So I can kind of follow along the stem if I want. I can go follow along some of the veins of the leaf and I'm not adding too many dots, but just a little bit so that I really tie in my whole painting and the dots in the main flower don't just look random. <laughs> All right, so there's that super simple addition that just helps bring it to life. Now with this, I just wanna add a little bit more in the background of it, just to really, really give it that Christmassy feel. So we're gonna add some berries into it. Um, thinking we will do some blue ones, some nice winter berries. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna paint in some circles in a few different clusters throughout my painting. So I'm gonna do three over here. And I can sort of bleed in the darker navy color on just half of them if I want. Just continue with that really cool effect that I have going through my whole painting of really taking advantage of the fact that we're painting with watercolor and I can have fun with bleeding colors together. So I'm gonna do another little cluster up here. If I want, I can stick right on top of this pine branch I already painted. We'll do two there. I might do another little mixture of three over here. and then possibly one more there. So I'm just spreading them out around my picture so that it has like very nice balance to it. So I would like to, I'm gonna paint stems on those, but I'm gonna add one more of these pine branches just sticking out sort of centrally on my painting so that it's very nice and balanced all the way around. And again, I'm keeping that nice and light so that the leaves is what stands out and not what's in the background. So now that I've painted the berries, I'm gonna take some brown. If you guys don't have a brown, mix red, blue, and a tiny bit of yellow. And I'm just gonna do little branches from these coming down as if they're coming out from in behind my flower. And then if I want, I could just add a few more little branches sort of stemming off of those just to really tie that in all the way throughout my painting. Right, and there you guys have a watercolor poinsettia painted with watercolor and ink. I hope that you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I hope that you followed along. If you did, please do take a picture, send it to me on Instagram at Alexandra Victoria Studio. I love to see what you guys are painting, so make sure to share. If there's anything else specifically Christmassy that you wanna learn, leave a comment below and I will try to do it in a future tutorial. Otherwise, make sure to like this video, subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you next time.